Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you all the glory and all the honor. Father, you said in your word in Matthew chapter 5 verse, verse 4, that blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. Father, this evening, let your comforting hand be upon our dear sister, Nicholas Bimbo, Pastor Wally, the children, and the entire family in the mighty name of Jesus. Nicholas Bimbo, this is the word of the Lord for you in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 to 4. Say praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. That is your portion, that God Almighty will comfort you, will strengthen you, we encourage you and we hold up your hand in this, in this time, in the mighty name of Jesus. This is an unusual circumstance. I have never been in a, in a situation, uh, an environment when we're having a service of song for both the father and the mother of a dearly beloved one. But God has told us in his word that we should not mourn like those that have no hope. See, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, it will so them also which sleep in Jesus we God bring with him. Daddy and mommy love each other so dearly. You know, and there's nothing that anyone can do to bring them back here but we are not going to mourn like those that have no hope because we know they are up in heaven beholding the face of their maker, rejoicing and holding each other's hand in the presence of the Lord. Our prayer, this, you let us pray. Father, we thank you. We commit this event to your, to your mighty hand. Take preeminence. Sit at the center of this gathering tonight. Holy Spirit, still pretend over this gathering, that the testimonies that will come forth this evening concerning our dearest beloved mommy and daddy, the testimony will draw men closer to God in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray for their defenses and the entire family. God says in his word that his grace is more than sufficient. But his word also says that his grace will continually abound towards each and every one of you. And that you have sufficiency in all things and abundance for every good work. So shall it be upon you and the entire family in the mighty name of Jesus. That you have sufficiency in all things and abundance for every good work. 
we commit everyone coming to this gathering tonight to the throne of grace of God. That he will come here safely. That the face of God and God alone and Jesus will be glorified and exalted in this gathering tonight. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Thank you so much, Dekinatane. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Once again, we thank God for their lives. They lived a well, good life. And we give God praise. May I invite ICCLA Vineyard Voices, our wonderful choir, to come up and give us a praise and worship. Praise the Lord. Let's encourage them as they come up. Let's encourage them. we have a blessed hope. I want us to worship God with all joy and all expectation in the name of Jesus. Father, we worship you. We lift up high praise to your name because there is none like you in all the earth. Thank you, Lord. Baba Olore in Yogo Yeo Olore Oba Osana Yeo Eshe Is what you will do. 
listen. What you say you will do, that is what you will do. Jesus. The maker of heaven and earth, there is none like him, there is none like him, oh Lord. Oh Lord. Hey. Oh! 
Kosiyo, Kosiyo. Bless him, bless him, bless him. We are here to celebrate. You are here to say thank you, Baba. We are here to say, Jehovah, you are worthy of our praise. Oh, yes, we bless you, Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah.
Jehovah will praise you. We give you praise. Mommy and Daddy, they're walking on the streets of gold right now. And they are praising God 24-7. And so we give God praise. Because they knew the Lord. They walked with him. They fellowshiped with him. They were in tune with God. And they loved God. You will hear more later. But I just wanted us to know that, yes, indeed, they're singing heavenly praises right now. Praise the Lord. I am going to call on the first grandchild and grandson of mommy and daddy in Prince Damilola John Adefeso to give us the first Bible reading. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'll be doing the first reading from Psalms 112, verses 1 through 10. Praise the Lord. How joyful are those who fear the Lord and delight in obeying his commands. Their children will be successful everywhere. An entire generation of godly people will be blessed. They themselves will be wealthy and their good deeds will last forever. Light shines in the darkness for the godly. They are generous, compassionate, and righteous. Good comes to those who lend money generously and conduct their business fairly. Such people will not be overcome by evil. Those who are righteous will be long remembered. They do not fear bad news. They confidently trust the Lord to take care of for them. They are confident and fearless and can face their foes triumphantly. They share freely and give generously to those in need. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. They will have influence and honor. The wicked will see this and be infuriated. They will grind their teeth in anger. They will slink away their hopes for it. Amen. Thank you so much, Alua Damilola. I'm going to invite the ICC LA Vineyard Voices to sing Mommy's favorite hymn, Lord, thy word abideth. There is no time she will talk to her children and they will not finish their conversation without him in particular. So please rise up and join the choir as a sing, Lord, thy word abideth. Thank you and God bless you.
praise the Lord. Lord, thy word abideth. As we were singing it, I was just picturing mommy singing that song. Her favorite hymn. We give God praise. To God alone be all the glory. I'm going to call on the first granddaughter, who is the second grandchild of His Royal Majesty and Uluri, in the, per in the person of Princess Bukola Adifeso. Oh, Ulu Yemisi, she shares the same name with Grandma Adifeso. Buki, take it on. Good evening, everyone. Thank you all so much for being here tonight. I'll be reading 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18, and I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. And now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to the believers who have died, so you will not grieve like people who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and was raised to life again, we also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring back with him the believers who have died. We tell you this directly from the Lord. We who are still living when the Lord returns will not meet him ahead of those who have died. For the Lord himself will come down from the heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet call of God. First the believers who have died will rise from, the, from their graves. Then together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forever. So encourage, so encourage each other with these words. God bless the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Buki. God bless you. And now one of daddy's favorite hymns, Christ is our cornerstone. On him alone we live. God bless you. Please rise and join the choir as we sing favorite one of Daddy's favorite hymn.
all in heaven and we're just singing and singing and singing and singing because we're going to face our maker and we will worship him the entire time we're there. Praise the Lord. So if Christ is not your cornerstone, make sure he is. Amen. I would like to call on our dear princess, Princess Fumilola Adifeso, to give us the third Bible reading. Roll with it for me. Good evening. Today I'll be reading from Revelation 7, verse 9 to 17. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they and where did they come from? I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to the springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Amen. God bless his holy word. Now we're going to sing a hymn that daddy and mommy loves to sing. Guide me, O the great redeemer. Take it on, choir. Let's rise up, please.
this is, we should always, always give unto the Lord. No matter what we're facing, no matter the situation, no matter the circumstance, learn to praise God at all times. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. One thing about mommy and daddy, oh, they loved each other. They loved each other. Those who know them know that they loved each other. Anywhere you find daddy, mommy's right there. You know, there's a Yoruba proverb that says, Ibitig mebalo karauntele, meaning where the snail is going, the shell is also, am I right? Is it the shell? Okay, the shell is also going. So where you see daddy, you see mommy. Where you see mommy, you see daddy. They don't leave each other. You, you know, you will still hear more about it. But for right now, we want to watch a slideshow about the lives and times of daddy and mommy. Media, you ready?
Aleluia. 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 The love between mom and dad, you could see it in there. It was, it was intense. Very wonderful. Very nice. We give God all the glory. Now I'm going to call on Kabiesi's cousin to come up and give us a eulogy on His Royal Majesty and on our mommy Olori as well. May I invite Prince Femi Faladu to please come up and read the eulogy. So bear with us. It might be a little bit long, but bear with us. Thank you so much, Prince Faladu. We are your start. But let me first uh, thank all of you for, for being here today to celebrate my uncle, uh, the Kabiesi Olunyopi, and the and his uh, and his wife, uh, the Olori. Well, I'll be reading the eulogy. I oba Justice uh, John Ajemala Jakai Oye Yos Saye Oye Oluin Yopin Yekiti. His Royal Majesty Oba Justice John Ademala Jakai JP Oye Yos Saye Oye One Oluin Yopin Yekiti Kingdom Yekiti State was born on the family of Oke Tagidigidi. Somebody correct that. Says, okay, tagidi gidi, not okay, tagidi gidi. Ruling house of Iyekiti State in Nigeria in 1938. He was born to the Royal Majesty of Samuel Adeshoko Ajakai Oyinyo Sayo Oyin Oluyi of Iyekiti and Olori Lea Alade Ajakai, both of blessed memory. He enrolled as a pupi as All Saints Primary School in Yekiti in January 1943. And he left for offer in Kwara State to attend St. Mark School between 1947 and 1950. And completed his primary school education at St. Paul School, Oyan, Oshun State in 1951. In January 1953, he went to Offa in Kwara State to start his secondary education at Offa Grammar School. He completed in December 1957. He started his working career as a clerk at the, in the Ministry of Health and Social Welfare, Western Region in 1958. He studied, he studied privately for the GCE, Advanced Level level examination, which he passed in, in January in 1960. He traveled abroad in 1960 and attended Holborn College of Law uh, and also the Inner Temple Inns of Court of London to study law. He passed the LLB on, on degree examination of London University, University and the bar final examination in 1965. He attended the Nigerian Law School between September and December in 1965, and was called to Nigeria bar in January of 1966. He started his legal practice in Emmanuel Chambers, headed by Chief Afe Babalola, sir, in 1966. And he left to establish his own practice in 1967. He later joined the Shambas of Ol Ola Tawura and Somolu in 1971. In 1975, Oba Justice John Ademola was invited to serve as a state commissioner in Western State in Nigeria and assigned as a post portfolio of Ministry of Works and Transport on the creation of Ondo State in 1976. He was deployed to Ondo State as, as a pioneer 
Commissioner for Local Government and Information. He was responsible for the restructuring of the local government council, resulting in the creation of viable local government office, development of the Ministry of Agriculture and Natural Resources in 1977. He was responsible for the coordinating of the National Agriculture Policy of Operation Feed the Nation in Ondo State. He established the Cocoa Development Unit Rehabilitation of Cocoa Farm by distributing the improved cocoa seedings to the farmers, thereby increasing the output in the state. Oba Justice John Ademola Jakai resumed his private legal practice on the 1st October 1979 and in August 1984, he was appointed a, a judge of the High Court of Ondo State. He headed the Judiciary, Judiciary Division, Division of Okitipupa, Ondo, Owo, and Adoikiti. He was appointed to head the Ondo State Chieftaincy Review Commission in 1987. The recommendation of the commission, which was accepted by the government, promoted stability in the state. On the creations of the state in 1996, Oba Justice Ademola Jakai was appointed the pioneer of pioneer chief judge, and he laid a solid foundation for the judiciary of Ikiti State. He managed the funds of the judiciary prudentially and, and the administration of his fellow judges and members of the staff. The judiciary was expanded. The 64 judicial divisions in the creation of the state were increased to eight divisions. The number of the judges increased from 8 to 15. The eight chief magistrate courts were expanded to 17. Additional 12 customary courts were created while 10 tribunals were established in local government, in the local government. Justice was the toss brought nearby to the people at the grassroots. He emphasized law library was built for the, for the use of the judges, magistrates, judicial staff, and selected members of the public, so as, such as lawyers and lecturers, law in faculties of the, of the state university. Oba Justice Ajakai retired from I court bench after 19 years of uh, meritorious service. He was immediately appointed the administration of the head to the head of National Judicial Institute, Abuja. He, he served in this capacity until he was selected and installed to the throne of his forefather as Oyeyo Sae Oye II the Oluyi of Inyikiti. On the 22nd December 2005, since his accession to the throne of Inyi Kingdom, Oba Justice Ademola Adakai reign has witnessed tremendous uplift in their called economic, education, social, political fortune of the kingdom. Kabiesi, Adakai is a first class oba, a permanent member of the state traditional council, the most senior oba in Irepodun, like a fellow in local government, and a, a rotational chairman of local government traditional council. His Royal Majesty Oba Justice Adimala Adakai had time for extra curriculum activities. In, in addition to 
administrating his domain, a firm Christian and Anglican communion. He served as the deputy chancellor of Ekiti, Ekiti Anglican Diocese from 1987 to 2009. Served as the chancellor and the chancellor. He was a patron of Boys Brigade from 1987. He was the first live royal father of Bible Society of Nigeria. He was a member of the past president of Foundations of Hope, international and patron of many Christian society, including Anglican Youth Fellowship, Christian Youth Associations, and Egbe Mobolunduro. Mobolunduro. It was a present fellowship of the Christian traditional rulers, Ekiti State, and a, patri a patriot of Nigeria Christian Corpus Fellowship. His Royal Majesty Oba Justice Ademola Dakai was a member of many national and international organizations, including Commonwealth Lawyers, Association World Jurists, Association Fountain of Hope International, Full Gospel Businessmen, Fellowship, International Commonwealth Judicial Education Institute, Laws the Born Terms, Novers Sothea, the oldest social club of South America. His Royal Majesty attended numerous national and international conferences and was widely traveled course in this engagement is a is point of include UK, USA, France, Germany. His Royal Majesty attended numerous national and international conferences and he was widely traveled in the course of this engagement. His point of call include UK, US, France, Germany, Italy, Sweden, Israel, Qatar, Canada, Mexico, Brazil, Jamaica, Singapore, Philippines, Japan, Egypt, Ukraine, Hungary, Ireland, Australia, Kenya, and Republic of South Africa. He did not ignore the West Africa coast. He visited Sri alone, Ivory Coast, and Bini, uh, Bini Republic. His royal, his royal Majesty won many awards, including Ambassador of Good Leadership in Nigeria, award in recognition of excellence, leadership roles in public service, West Africa Newsweek Merit Award for Excellence as a role model, Nigeria Institute of Civil Engineers, Christ School Award for Excellence, Ekitir Parapo, Award for Excellence in Judiciary Excellence and Rule of Law. Ekiti Diocese of Nigeria Anglican Common Communion, Award of Honor for being a good ambassador of Ekiti Diocese. In Ekiti, Award of Honor of, for Community Development, Law Society, University of Adu Ekiti, Award as the Distinguished Royal Personality Equity Summit Role Model Award in recognition of commitment and selfless service towards youth development, Distinguished tradi Traditional Rulers of the Year 2011, Award of Patriotism and Outstanding Achievements. Thank you. The Chief Justice of Nigeria and Chairman of Board of Governors of Nigeria Judicial Institute conferred on KBSC the 
prestigious fellowship of the National Judicial Institute, FNJI. Having satisfied all requirements which include excellence, efficiency, and commitment in the start of judiciary functions, inedible contributions to development and advancement of Nigeria, lurid prudences. I obar Justice John Ademaya Adekai hobbies were gardening, watching football, reading, and traveling. Kabiesi was happily married to Olori, Josephine Yemisi Adekai. And the union was blessed with, with children and grandchildren. <laughs> now I turn to my aunt. Olori, Josephine, Oluyabisi, Adebimpe, Adakai. Olori, Josephine, Oluyabisi, Adebimpe, Adakai was born on the 9th of, the 9th of August, 1940, in Jebuode, into the illustrious family of the late Chief Joseph Olorun Shaw Adenuga of Oduesa and late Madam Mary Ibidapo Ni Adegboyega of Porogun Ijebu Ode. She was blessed with many brothers and sisters, of whom she grew up with until she traveled to the United Kingdom in 1957. Education? Eye Lori started a primary education as at St. Paul Primary School, Mangon Oshun State, where all our siblings of the era st also studied, also attended. She attended Girls' Modern School, Oshogo Oshun State, for her post primary education, where she excelled greatly in, in 1957. As was customary in those days, she traveled to England, to United Kingdom, to pursue proverbial golden flea in the nursing professional. Her traveling to UK to study was influenced by Are Afe Babalola, who was then her father's lawyers. Iyelori said, the only advice given to her by, by father, Papa Adenuga, when traveling was Ronti Omeni Ti Wonshe. Remember the child of whom you are. She said she took, his ad, she took this advice to the heart and never disappointed. She did a part and two nursing midwife, midwifery, courses, and work placement in the various hospitals in Hemel, Hempstead, and, and London, two of which were former mothers and Stoke Newton Hospital and East London, where she had a first and, first and second daughter on the completion of that course, she was registered as state registered nurse. Nursing career. Olori Josephine YBC worked at various hospitals in London, post a training, and in 1966, she traveled back to Nigeria with her two young daughters to join KBSC, who had returned to Nigeria to attend Nigerian Law School and start his law practice in 1965. She worked as a staff nurse at the prestigious University College, Ibadan, as the UCH, and worked her way up the nursing ladder in various wing of the hospital. Just as in London, she had three 
other children at UCH where she worked. Her fifth child was indeed UCH baby. She was named by UCH staff from pregnancy a fair at Inuke. Found out for herself how much of a UCH baby she was when she studied medicine at UCH. And all our UCH trained lecturers knew her from the baby in 1957. UCH sponsored a yellowy to England for a three-month intensive care course. On her return, she worked at the intensive care unit where she became a matron, a matron for many years until her retirement in 1989. Many students, nurses, doctors, and indeed other medical professionals who went through their training and career development at, in UCH, UCH former on a very form, a very close bond with a yellowy, and went on to develop lifelong relationship and friendship outside work with her. They found her to be very good listener and advice both on the work and home front level. This endear her so many, so many, to many, to many, to many who even became adopted, uncles and aunties to her children today. Marriage. Olori Josephine, Yemisi, Kabiesi, met Kabiesi, then a law student in the London home of her cousin in 1963. And the friendship and loving relationship culminated into a civil wedding on the 31st of March, 1964, at the Hackery Town Hall on, in the, on the 22nd August, 1964. They had their church wedding, which was well attended by family and friends. The union was blessed with children who are now parents themselves and making Yilori a joyful mother of many children and, and grandchildren. A position she, re she released to the very end. Her list of children and grandchildren far extended past her biology, biological children. She was unapologetically tough, a disciplinary with a heart of gold, a very loving and caring mother to all. A yellow was good company and delighted in, talk, in talking about the young years alive in the UK starting in those days. Eyelori held the family home in the Badon and provided the rock solid stability and support for the family. Why Kabiesi during his career working in Ondo and Ikiti State in Abuja, it was a home in which friends both sides of the family were welcome, and the children grew up knowing most of their uncles and aunties. Size, it was only after the children were grown and have mostly flown, flown the nest that she finally went to join KBC in the kitchen. A yellow was a supportive queen, consort to. KBC, both on the town and state level. After a bit of shaky feet, she, em she embraced her positions as a yellowy which vigor. She meets well with all Oloris within as a mother and aunt and the younger yellowy friends and sisters by her 
contemporaries, she herself treated older oloris with respect and gave them their deals. A yellow was a member of the, the Lady Circle of St. Anne Church, Molete Ibadan. The family church and the, and the member for many years of full business fellowship, premier branch before her final move to Inyekiti. She was a staunch member of the Mother's Union. She was also a member of the Inner Wheel Club, Ibadan and was blessed to travel to the world with Kabisi, which was a Rotarian in their capacity as a member of the Eli Club. <coughs> with the move to Inyekiti, the home church became Baba Mboni. With the move to Inyekiti, the hometown became Baba Mboni, Anglican Church, Ilori, entrenched herself in the church activities and the contributors to contributors to the progress of the church, and indeed gave as much support she could she could to many of the churches in the equity. In any way she could, Ilori Mama, the Ola live a life to, to, to fullest, to the glory of Almighty God. And she had a positive impact whenever she found herself. She had left Mark on <clears throat> at the sound of, may, of, of time and a great mist. And is, and is greatly missed. May the soul of Olori Josephine and they be paid the Kali rest in perfect face and rise again in glory. Thank you very much, Prince Femi Fallo. Do they bring in you water so that you can? Yeah, this is what normally happens when you fulfill destiny, when you fulfill your dreams and aspirations. Daddy and mommy did. So you can imagine, this actually had to be shortened. It had to be shortened when it was being put here. So you can imagine if they put everything fully in here. Um, we'll still be here till maybe tomorrow morning if we kept on going. So thank you so much for bearing with us. And as you can see, as Prince Faladun was reading, at some point he almost lost his voice. So we give God praise. When it is our turn, May they have things to say about us fulfilling our dreams and the destiny and purpose God brought us here on planet Earth for. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. God bless you. So it, now it's time for tributes, but this is how it's going to go. I'm going to put my teacher hat on. Two minutes. If it goes past two minutes, I'm going to stand up. And once I stand up, just know you have to hand me the microphone because we don't want to be here for till tomorrow morning, okay? So I'm going to call on my brother, Brother Kuli Fanny Ro, to come up and say something about mommy and daddy at the same time. Two minutes, which is 260 seconds, which is 120 seconds. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everybody, and thank you so much for coming here for KBC and Olori. Two minutes, I'm going to make it short. KBC and Olori has been a very supportive and provided unconditional love. That's what I mean, unconditional love to my family, my parents when they were alive, uh, when they were gone to, the, uh, to rest. Even before they were gone to rest, Olori will be there almost every two weeks, and you call me, your parents are doing fine. So she always gave me that peace of mind that uh, my parents are doing well. 
Even when they were gone, they were always there. When I, whenever I visited Nigeria, when I called them, it's all full of prayer. Um, Prince Falodun mentioned UCH. Olori mentored my senior sister at UCH. She's uh, assistant director of uh, nursing at uh, ICU as of today. So they wrote a very good story of themselves. So each day we spend, according to KBSC, you are writing your own story. So think about the story you will write. They wrote a very good story. Um, everybody called me Ayo, but they call me Kunle. So whenever I hear Kunle, I know it's either KBSC or Olori. Um, they call him Adedayo, everybody, but they call him Aweda. So in the house, uh, when he was born, young, when he was growing up, that's uh, Kaibesi and Olori's uh, grandson. Um, they fill the void of being a grandparent to my kids and uh, a father to the entire family. They even advise my own royal family on how to be a good uh, prince or a king whenever any one of us comes to that point to become a king. So we all, we've taken that note and we kept it. Uh, to cut it short, uh, when he was growing up, at a certain age in the house, um, when we spank him, the next thing is, I will tell KBSC. From Corona, how are you going to tell KBSC in E? Then I will be like, on oh, no, that means you are from where you will tell KBSC. The mom will be like, ah, Ebami wa KBSC at At the end of the day, um, what I want to bring out is, KBSC have done everything for us. I'm not sure how to thank them or how to say uh, everything I wanted to say about them. My sister, my, I had a wedding for my uh, nephew or my niece in Nigeria. KBSC and Olori were the first two to be sitting in front. 30 minutes before the service started, they drove four and a half hours from Inyekiti to Ibadan. I had issue with government project. KBSC and Olori, they drove to Abuja from me, Ekiti. There is nothing they would not do for my family. So on behalf of uh, Fanero family of Elemu, we thank you so much, and uh, God bless the entire family. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brother Kunle. God bless you. Now I'm going to call on our brother, Brother Bolade Ayuario. Two minutes. 120 seconds. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. You can see that her two minutes was a little bit more emphatic when she, when she gave it to me. Baba was, I call him Baba because it's like a daddy to me. He was very accomplished. You can see that. You can see the just. Uh, he, he rose to the point of uh, chief justice before he even stepped into royalty to take the monarchy. So, I mean, there's not much to talk about that. Um, but I do want to talk about the fact that he came to this life for a mission. Um, William Shakespeare has uh, this um, initiated this. Uh, think about the 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 um, the head that wears the crown. You know, uh, on 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 easy lies the head that wears the crown. But for the likes of Baba, because he came for a mission, and I'm going to explain that in five, ten seconds. I would say, on easy lies the crown that wears the head. Why? Because this head. Is the, is the head that is doing, making changes to the crowns, especially in Nigeria. That was his mission. He was um, picked, I think by God, to amalgamate what we have in our culture and what we have in religion. Baba was a devoted Christian. We all know that. And he brought this into the monarchy. You might think, oh, uh, you know, I mean, that is easy. He did it. He, I mean, he, but I'm telling you, that's one of the most difficult challenges. People who know him, people who are close to him will know what he went through 
to bring Christianity into our rich and beautiful culture. That is that about Baba. What I think I like most about him is the fact that his majesty, when he sits down, when you're with him, you can feel the majesty. But in particular, you can feel the fatherhood. He puts you at ease. Your royalty, you also know, is not an easy thing. It's not an easy thing. You have to come with it. It's an aura that comes with you. But how he's able to merge his royalty with fatherhood, that is unique. That is unique about him. When you sit with him, you are relaxed. When you sit with him, you know what is oozing out, exchanges between you, is fatherhood. It's not about, you know, um, the, rigor, the, 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 the rigors of royalty. That is that about Baba. The Olori was the single Olori in the palace when they went there. That is an achievement. That is an achievement. And allow me to just bring a little bit of uh, humor into this. Now, a, one, of, one of these uh, Hollywood families, you know Hollywood families, you have musical chairs, musical chairs kind of marriage. And, you know, it's one, it's a divorce, you get divorced and, you, uh, and they move on and they marry again. And one of these very successful uh, couples, the wife, uh, they had about um, one of their friends who just left, who ran away with a 25-year-old. They were in their 50s. She's already standing in front of me. She, they were in their 50s. And um, so the wife was worried. And she said, you know, um, um, uh, he, he called his name. He said, um, Annie. Annie is the name of the guy. He said, Annie, are you going to leave me? Are you going to do the same thing that your friend did to me? Are you going to, you know, just run away with a 25 year old? And the, uh, the, the husband said, well, honey, you are 50 plus. 50 plus is 25 times 2. You are like two 25-year-old wives that I have in the house. And that is what Olori is. He filled, she filled the palace. The 50-year, in their 50th year, you must have seen the picture, she was wearing a garment. A garment that she wore on the day of their engagement, on the 50, 50th year. I mean, on the 50th year. That tells you, it shows you discipline. That shows you love. That shows you the kind of loyalty that she had for the family. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to call on my brother that I call Egmo to come and represent the Adifeso family in the person of Dr. Dele Adifeso. Thank you. Two minutes, sir. Two minutes. Thank you, everyone, for coming to KBAC and Olori Ajakai. KBAC was a real gem king whom the Adipesa family will deeply miss. He was a strong role model and influencer to us in Adipesa family. He touched many of the members of the family in many ways. as it did uh, the lives of many others whom I know. KBS is always in Adipesa's family's functions, in the weddings, naming ceremony, and supporting the family, both morally and financially. In Ibadan, it was unmistakable that my father, Isaac Kolawali Adipesa, and my mom, Isabella Adepeso, both love and respect Kabiesi. Despite being a judge of Ekiti State, K 
Cabbie and Sil will take time to play with her as kids anytime he visits. And he will mentor everyone in the family. In the Adifesa family, we have many in-laws and family friends. But he was the only one that stood out as a role model. Kabi is here love his family, undoubtedly. And he made an ample time for them. I recall an almost annual cross-nation trip to US and UK, which he took to bond with the children and grandchildren. When KBSC visited the Adifesa of family, it brought so much warmth and joy. We will have conversation for hours, and it's always well relaxed and listening. He will also, it's also a very good listener, like someone just said, very soft-spoken, and often so, with so much wisdom as a king, even when he wasn't a king. I guess as a judge. This was shown through the compassion to us all, children and old. He's also always approachable at any time, and you can discuss anything with him. Throughout Kabiesu's life, he never strayed away from the Lord, putting God first always. Kabiesu and the family will always cherish his memory, unwaving faith in God, his compassion, principles and orderliness, objectiveness and fairness, wisdom and patience, foresight, effectiveness in the family. The adifes of family love you. May your soul rest in peace. And for mommy, I recalled Despite being the head nurse in University Teaching Hospital, Olori and KBAC, they are always together, either visiting, and it's always unmistakably also to say how much our family loved Olori. Throughout Olori's life, also, she never stayed away from the Lord. Mommy Ajakai, the Adefeso family, we always cherish your memory. Olori planted the seed of love that will bloom forever in our family. We know you held our hands for a while, but our hearts will be held forever loving you. The Adefeso family love you, Ma. May your soul rest in perfect peace. Thank you. Thank you very much to the Adifes of family. God bless you. So I'm going to give my own quick tribute before I call on the family to give their tribute. Um, I'm tying this ashoki on top of my wrapper because this is how mommy loves to dress. Once mommy wears her wrapper, since so she became Olori, she normally ties a shoki on it. Um, let me start first by anytime they come and visit. I know it's my, I have the microphone. Thank you. Anytime they come, anytime they come and visit, mommy will always bring me gifts. She will tell you fair to call me and get my measurement. And when I get there, she's like, I made this one, I made this one, I made this one your size. Which one do you want? Take any. That's number one. The iru that I used to cook is always from Ikiti when mommy was alive. Even if she wasn't coming, if she found somebody coming and they bring for a beam, she, used to, she calls uh, Dickness Beam for a beam. And she brings for a beam. I must have my own portion. She will say, make sure you give has. She used to call me Kabiesi's daughter. Not my own father, Kabiesi, but her husband's daughter. Because they truly loved my family. One of daddy's visit, Ayo was in elementary school, our baby. He was in elementary school then. 
He asked Kabiesi what he did professionally. Kabiesi said, well, I was a justice, but now I'm a traditional ruler. I just said, what does that mean? He said, well, I rule over people. Oh, so I just said, so you must have land. He said, yes, I have land. I just said, what are you doing with your land? He said, well, you know, I'm developing the town and everything. I just said, have you thought about farming? Use your land to farm. He said, okay, what do you want me to put on the farm? I just said, apples, grapes, and all the fruits you can think of, American fruits. So KBS said, okay, I will think about that. So I just said, when you do it, remember it's my idea. So you will have to pay me. Uh, KBS said, okay, what is the percentage that you want? He told KBS, I will take 60%. You will take 40%. KBS stretched out his hand and said, deal. Ever since that day, he calls Ayo my business partner. That's what he refers to Ayo as my business partner. Second thing I want to say, when I went to Nigeria, I can't remember what year now, my, my, my nephew was being ordained. He, he's in the military. He's a major today. But then he was a lieutenant. He was in the military, but was being ordained in the Anglican church in Usiekiti as an Ang Anglican reverend. And I called mom. I said, mom, I'm coming to Ekiti. I just landed in Nigeria. The following day, they said, we're going to Ekiti. So I called mom. I said, I'm coming to Ekiti because such and such is happening. We see Ekiti. She said, ah, it's not far from in Ekiti. Don't worry. From the minute we entered the bus till we got to see Ekiti, every hour, mommy was calling. Are you here? Are you here? Are you here? Are you here? Eventually, I went to the palace. I know you saw those pictures. I was slim then, no? in those pictures. <laughs> and the way they treated, I went with some of my siblings and cousins, the way they treated us. In fact, mommy got to church before I got to the church where they were ordaining my nephew. Mommy got there before I got there. They were already there. When I got to church, they said that they are looking for you. You know, they, they've just been, they, they, they've been my family. Let me put it like that. When I say my family, I didn't know family. One of her mommy's last words to me were, Adeinka, do not leave her beam. Those were one of her last words to me. And she, she calls me from Nigeria. And anytime she calls me, she talks about my husband to me, telling me that my husband and I should remain together. Whatever he does, beard and remain together. Uh, but she also always tells me, don't ever leave a beam. And I've told her beam not to leave you. Yes or no? She always, she says that to me all the time. So I give God praise for their lives. Glory be to God. Amen. So I'm going to call on the three of you, the three grandchildren, to go up together. And whoever wants to go first can go first. Okay? Two, two minutes. Yeah. For me, you want to go first? Go Okay, for my grandpa, I wrote a little tribute. Um, I'm so thankful to God that I knew you as my grandpa. You were always so kind, loving, and joyful. We even shared the, the best birth month, which is March, which added to our special connection. Thank you for being someone I could always look up to. You were always praying. You were always loving. I miss your smile. You were always smiling. I'm thankful for the memories we share. I will hold them tightly. I will cherish them forever. You indeed were an amazing grandpa. You were special and you were forever be embedded in my heart. Continue to rest peacefully. And for my grandma, I thank God for the life you lived and the memories we shared together. The hours spent shopping in downtown, the hours we spent watching TV, the hours we spent watching Christian Network, the hours we spent sipping on our tea, English breakfast. I am so thankful for your life because you were so special to me and my family. Thank you for teaching us to live a God-centered life. You were the true definition of a prayer warrior. I remember the days I would wake up to you just praying. You taught me so much. You were one of a kind, and you were like no other. 
I miss your feistiness, but you were always loving. I miss you so much, Grandma. Rest peacefully. I too wrote some tributes for my grandfather and my grandmother. Dearest grandpa, I am so blessed and fortunate to have had such a kind soul as my grandfather. From eating cereal together to playing basketball together and dancing together on my birthday, my memories with you will stay with me forever. I knew we would have a special bond because you were sworn in as a judge on my birthday many years before I was even born. And I'm so happy and grateful to have spent multiple of my birthdays and your wedding anniversaries with you as well. Thank you for everything you taught me and for your unconditional love for all your grandchildren. Your gentle spirit touched me immensely and so many others who were around you. I miss you, but I know you're having an amazing time in heaven. Dear Grandma, you were the, the first feisty woman I ever met. Your fiery personality was balanced by your kind-heartedness. You were a prayer warrior who prayed and interceded for us. Your presence alone commanded the attention of everyone in the room. A true boss woman, a Proverbs 31 woman. We spent so much time together shopping for hours at the Family Christian Center, had great talks about health, spent, time, spent birthdays together as we shared the same birthday, the best birthday month, August. <laughs> I wouldn't trade these moments, um, special moments I have with you for the world, and I'm so grateful for the time we spent together. You touch so many people by being you. Thank you for teaching me, teaching me so much about being a godly woman and a woman who stands up for herself. You show me, show me and all of your grandchildren tough yet unconditional love. I miss you, but I know you're having an amazing time in heaven. And just like a few memories I have. I always forgot how older grandpa was because he would just be playing with us. There's a video I have, he would just literally dancing around. This man is 80, like 75 years old, just dancing as if he's 25. And there was a time I think we were playing basketball. He was <laughs> shooting the, the basketball and he hurt himself. He hurt his shoulder. But that's why I was like, man, this, old, this man is old. But <laughs> you would never tell because he had such a heart, like he had a youthful heart. And then grandma, uh, she taught me how to properly make tea. So one time she told me to make tea and I, you know, just put the tea bag in the hot water. She said, no, that's incorrect. She made me pour out the tea and then put the tea down, fill the cup up just a little bit of hot water and let it sit. I didn't know you had to make the cup hot first. <laughs> so after the cup gets hot, you pour that water away and then you make the tea. So, <laughs> so many uh, beautiful memories I have of them and I love their, their balance. Grandma was so tough, so stubborn, so feisty, so fiery. And grandpa was just gentle, very meek, just very, just very observant, didn't talk too much. And if you talked, it was very soft and very, such a beautiful couple. And that's something I also aspire to when I'm looking, you know, when that time comes to get married. <laughs> so I just thank God so much for placing them as grandparents to me. And I miss them so both so much, but I know they're having an amazing time in heaven, especially with each other and with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm going to log to you guys. This one's a little tough for me. I know I normally come on here. I'm smiling. I'm joking. But um, me, I was going to read this, but I'm not going to read it anymore. Um, my grandpa and I, um, we were so close. Um, anyone that knew me, they knew I was very close to my grandpa. From the time we used to write letters to each other, from the time he would come and say, I'm so proud of you. There are times where I was going through challenges in life, not sure I was adequate or not sure, you know, I was struggling in school or whatever it may be. Grandpa would always come to me and tell me, you are a prince, but more than that, you are a child of God. You are a king. You can do more than anything you put your mind to. And from that moment, me and Grandpa have been so close. And, you know, I bear the name John as well. And I've heard so many things about, you know, the stuff he was doing in Nigeria, but when you would come and you'd see him, he'd be in some Phallus Padres uh, polo t-shirt that was like $5. He would get some pants from Walmart, and he'd be suffice. He'd be so happy. That's all it took for him to be happy, always smiling, 
always laughing, always joking, always asking questions. And that's the memories I have of my grandpa. I, to this day, you know, I still carry the shoes that we bought together from downtown. I still carry the staff that he brought from Nigeria for me. I still have the letters in my drawer next to my bed till this very moment. I was that close to my grandpa. And even to the point when he came, even when he came three years ago in 2019, even though you could tell there was something wrong, you would look at his face and he was still smiling. One of the, one of the things he told me was, don't worry about me, I'll be fine. I'm going to make it to your wedding day. I will make it. I just know he'll still be, he's still here with me to this day. I love that man so much from the bottom of my heart. And my grandma too. From the very first song, and I'm going to sing a little bit. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. He's my friend. He's my friend. He will never leave me. He will never leave me. He's my friend. He's my friend. The very first song that my grandma sang to me, and I memorized that because she made me. That woman was very spicy and feisty, indeed. Indeed. Anybody that knew my grandma knew she was a feisty woman. I remember when I was younger, maybe eight years old, maybe not, I can't remember anymore. She was washing plates, and I was just sitting there. I don't even know what I was doing. Oh, my goodness. The amount of criticism that came out of my grandma's mouth, I was like, yo, next time she comes, I'm hiding. And it's exactly what I did. She came the year after, and I was hiding. I still remember to this day. But it seemed like they came, you know, every other year. And every time they would go, I would, I would miss them dearly. It got even to a point where we went to Nigeria this past summer. We got to Nigeria this past summer, and my grandma was laying there. And it got to a point where I told everybody, I'm not going to go see my grandma. I'm not going to see her like this. Because the woman I know is the woman that is shopping at Father's Padres for eight hours, shopping at Macy's for 10 hours. It got to a point we were at downtown, and we, we looked back, she was gone. She'd be going into the stores. So for me to go there and see her, I was like, no. But I know they're all resting in heaven right now. And they've left a legacy for us. And we will continue to walk in that legacy by God's grace. And even to this day, those sayings that was in the eulogy, remember whose child you are. Indeed, remember whose child you are. Not just your immediate family, but we are children of God, children of the Most High. Therefore, we can do anything we put our minds to. May they continue resting in the bosom of our Lord. Thank you so much. You can see how much they touch the lives of their grandchildren. To God alone be all the glory. Now I'm going to call on the princess herself and the prince too. Prince, Pastor, Wali, Adifeso, and Princess Abim Adifeso to come and say something about mommy and daddy. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. <sighs> well, I'm going to make it really brief. I would just say that uh, I know I'm blessed and highly favored when I enter into the house of Abimbola, the dad I did not see that first day when I went in there, that's after some days. But eventually daddy I met after I've met mommy. So I'm gonna put two of them together and I'm gonna make it really brief. Daddy eventually when he came, he didn't say much. 
we just call. How are you? How is everything going on? But for every single birthday, every call, he calls us. He encourages us. He encourages me. He interviews me. How are you doing? How is your family? How is everything going on? And he was a loving father, a mighty man of valor. After knowing how much he has accomplished, I look at him. I said, how will this man sit in my dirty truck to go to the construction site with me? As the chief just and we say, no, 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 I'm not going in the car, I'm going in the truck, the same truck. We get there too, he wants to buy hamburger like I'm buying hamburger. I say, Daddy, do we go home? He said, no. And we do the same thing, we go downtown, we run around together, and we continue to encourage and inspire me and give me advices. But there's one thing he always says. He says, in all things, give thanks to God. And I said, well, this man is, and he's a, he's a prayer warrior too, and he believes. And there was one particular time we went to a kitty, and he said, we are demolishing this, and they're going to build a, a chapel on top of a shrine. I said, you're going to build a chapel on top of a shrine, and, this, and he did it. They did it, and uh, we thank the Lord for that, and also, he was looking, I think he went to the Governor Adebayo's house, and I met with him with some of the others and a few of them, and he said they are also part of the Association of Nigerian Christian Obas. So, and I look and I see all these Obas, and they, during the wedding, came about 40, 38 Obas when we came for the wedding, and they were all Christians. And one of them, Obalai Toro, was dancing like, I mean, even though I'm a born again Christian, I was looking, I see a whole Oba, he threw all his Agbada upside down and and he danced very well. And we give glory to God. As for mommy, she was a wonderful woman. I came to that house 32 years ago to, to visit Abim. And I told her, good afternoon, ma'am. My name is Wal. He said, yes, your name is Wal. I said, yes, ma'am. And you went to Ebenezer. I mean, you went to Ebenezer. Then you now went to St. Jude's Ibutimeta, you graduated this one, you went to Federal Government College Worldly, you graduated, then you went to Russia, you just came back and I almost ran out of the house that <laughs> where did she get? I mean, I was scared a little bit, and I was like, I moved back a little bit and I said, Yes, ma'am. And and uh, the, when he saw that I was scared now, and he was say, Okay, don't worry, don't worry, sit down. Then she picked up the phone and called my uncle. Dr. Nobanjo, and he said, give me the phone. And the doctor said, Wally, what are you doing there? <sighs> I said, well, I came to see, well, he said, know the house where you are. If you are not serious, get out of that house. <laughs> so at the end of the day, my, my mother-in-law, which I don't call mother-in-law, is my mother, her best friend was my auntie, Auntie Oja, my dad's junior brother, my junior sister. So every step of the way, she knew us from when we were small, and each and every one of us. So I said, no wonder. She was a prayer warrior, as we all know, and she did so many things. But one of the things that she told me when we first had Dami, and we're still going to um, Episcopalian Church there on, on El Segundo, he said, Emma Crony Church, very soon. She was born again. She was telling us we should go to a Bible-believing church then. But when we were going to Episcopalian Church, he said, you're going to leave this place very soon. I said, Mommy, this is good. I was then, I was even in the bishop's committee in that place then. So I said, why am I going to leave this place? Said, You're going to leave here very soon. So at the end of the day, we thanked the Lord when ICC came up and we joined the DC and said, now you, you, know, you now understand what I'm saying. I said, yes, Mommy. But we thank the Lord because she always encourages us. As she said, she's very feisty and it doesn't matter who crosses that way. And she sits me down and she talks to me like a baby too sometimes. But she's my mother. She was very loving to us and I thank God for her life. I know they are both working on the streets of gold. And the only thing I say is that just remember whose child you are and take care of your siblings. And I say, yeah, I took care of my siblings. My siblings are here. He said, I mean your siblings. So we thank the Lord. And since then, all of us will be one and God will continue to keep us together. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you everyone for coming. This has been um, a rocky road, and um, especially 
when daddy died, and the reason why we really didn't do anything was that because he was an over, and the tradition of our um, equity is like they mourn the over for a whole year. So we said that, so we could not do anything then. So we said that we would do it like a year after. And that was when it was in the midst of COVID. So we could not really celebrate his life. And we kept postponing and postponing until we went home to do the celebration of his life because they took it from us. People kept asking us, are you doing it? And when they, when we're not even, you know, we're just giving the excuses, they said that, you know what, we do it. This man deserves to be celebrated. And if you are not doing it, we do it. So my siblings and I, we just quickly planned it, and it was glorious. And looking at it in hindsight now, with mommy, when daddy came in 2019, it's like he, 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 he didn't know he was going to die. But when he came, he, he, got, he got off from Inyekiti. He went to Ibadan to see all my, my siblings and their children. Then he went to Lagos and stayed with my sister in Lagos and saw all the grandchildren, and then went to Lake to, to, to London to go and visit my sister, and then he stayed with my sister. He came here to America. He was in the hospital. We took care of him. He, so he did all that, and he, went, he made his way back to Nigeria, and he died. With my mom, my mom waited for every single one of us to, to come home. She saw every one of our grandchildren. She didn't make the trip. We made the trip home. And she saw every one of us before she died, like roughly a month after. What can I say about my parents? When my dad was um, a struggling lawyer, that's why my mom became very tough. Because my dad was always on the moon, struggling, hustling. So it was my mom. She was, <laughs> oh Lord, she was very tough on us. That if she made us see Pepe, like we bring Pepe. <laughs> she was really hard on us because she was the father and the mother for us then. And then when um, and daddy made that up in, in the grandchildren. Because what he, when he wasn't there for us, when we started having he invested his life in his grandchildren. Daddy will call me every year, Abim, Mufuakie, and Rao Mom and Soy. That means that I want to come and visit you. I'm missing my grandchildren. He would travel every year, not because of us, just to come and spend time with them. He would spend time with them. Which, uh, they would dance. They would play basketball. All those stuff. And it wasn't only with my, with my children. It was with all the grandchildren. And mom, too, was, um, was a prayer warrior. Oh, God. I, st I still miss my mom. When you talk about a woman that invested time in praying, because I remember, my mom, we always pray. Like, at times, the phone will ring, like, 4 o'clock. Five o'clock over here. And I said, Mommy, you just finished praying. And she said, Yes, 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 yes. And then even my sister in London, as she would say that at times the Holy Spirit would wake her up at three o'clock in the night, in the in the morning. I said, Ah, pray. And then she said, Ah, pray, Asha. My mom, my mom is on the knees praying. Why should I be praying? And she will just go back to sleep. <laughs> now, <laughs> now all of us are waking up. I said that, eh? So she would say that, oh no. Now she, she said that I'm a prayer warrior. Now mommy is gone. Mommy invested a lot in us through prayers, through discipline, through encouragement. My mom spoiled me. I'm telling you. It is so true. My mom, it's true. She spoiled me. There is nothing I asked for my mom. It's within a me she will provide. I will tell mommy, oh, mommy, uh, mommy, I need expression. What is expression? Oh, yeah, to braid here. My, my garage is full of expression. She will at times not bring anything. She will pack that them, the luggage full of expressions. And even when I when I moved there from London, I would say, Mommy, my 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 um, I don't like the mop, the mop pill in America. So uh, mommy said that why? I said that because when you are using it, there's nowhere to squeeze the water from, where the water from. My mommy brought mop pill from London. <laughs> True story. She bought mop pill from London. My younger sister, if I call me this uh, when we are going home. She said that uh, I need something. What do you need? More pill. I said from now. She said that yeah. You remember, mommy, pay back time. So when I was going back to when we went back to Nigeria, I carried a more pill, a more pill from America to Nigeria. So that's what my mommy was. She would always do everything. I wasn't even sewing clothes. She would always buy clothes for me. As soon as I saw that I, I mean, <laughs> only I should be. That's the only everything that you see me wear until my mom died or my dad. 
they were sewing it for me. They were buying it for, for me. When my daddy would do his birthday, she would not even, she would do everything. And when he, when he did his 80th birthday, I would have to like force my daddy to take that thing from me. Because, because he would always plan everything. All these people that he wrote, he planned it. He wrote everything. He had to take some. There was nothing that he wrote there that was, that was not um, written by him. He took his time to write it. And, it was, um, and because he was a lawyer, he was very meticulous in so many things. And we found that when my daddy died, my sister was a regent for, for like a whole year. And she said that people were coming to the palace. In, you know, people like in, 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 um, in, in pens, in 20s. And they were lamenting that. So who is going to pay our children's school fees? What are we going to do? Who is going to do this? Who is going to do this? My, my sister said I'm a civil servant from, uh, from London. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to. And then when we started going through my daddy's, um, uh, when, when we started going through his stuff, we saw that daddy sent over 1,000 people to colleges, to schools, to everything. It is all documented. It is unbelievable. We did not, I mean, like the particulars of buying houses for people, buying cars, doing all that. And because in his manner, he would do it quietly. He would not even say it, but everything was documented, it was written, it was. And then the salmon books, we found about, my sister counted about 50 salmon books, year by year, that was writing salmons and everything, like, you know, when he's taking notes and all that. So they were there and they were prayer warriors. My daddy lived life and he was in the world. But when he gave his life to Christ, he never looked back. And it transformed, like uh, I think um, Rabbi Oladi said that, that it transformed. Because when he became an Oba, he was the only, he was the Oba that refused to marry another wife. And people were like, press, they were like, they were like pressing him that, how, how can you be the Oba that would not have another wife? You need to have a son on, on, on the throne. My, my dad would tell them that, you know the son you are looking for. You see my son, Kola just had the son. That is the son on the throne. They pestered him to have another wife because that is our tradition. One wife will not, will not work in that kind, but he refused. He stayed with my mom. They stayed together. They lived together for over 50-something years, 55 years. And, and when, my, when my daddy died, my mom was never the same again. It's like we lost him. Or we lost her. She was here physically, but she was gone. There was nothing we could do. I used to threaten mommy that to say daddy didn't, daddy, and daddy, the funniest thing that daddy fought to be alive, but it was his time to go. He always tell Dami, when he came here, I would say that Dami, you know what, when you get married, then I'm, I'm ready to go. It never, you know, it never, that never happened. So I told, I, I told mommy that you, you say daddy, you are going to do that. You are going to leave. You are going to do that. You are going to be there. And mommy would say that, hey, you know why, hey, I don't know how to travel low. You know, your daddy, your daddy, you will take me, you know, will try to take me around and everything. I said, we come and pick you up and everything. She never, my daddy got like 10 years visa that he never used. He never used it. My mom had that visa 10 years. She refused to use it. Not because she couldn't use it. She just could not bring herself to come here without daddy. It was like when daddy was gone, that was it. We could not do anything. Like my brother rightly put it that mommy was never on this planet hat and it was never in heaven. Now we know where she's fully in. Is now she's with her with the with our Lord Jesus Christ and she's with God. So I'm thankful to God. I love my parents. They loved us. They pampered us. They spoiled us. They did everything. So I am so thankful that I know where they are. They are resting in the bosom of the of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They are walking on the street of gold. I am so thankful. I am so I can go on and on and on. And to and to tell you the truth, I know I'm not going on. And you see this. For me, even standing here, I have to thank you, Pastor Yinka, and my husband. It was very tough for me. I, did, I, I went through a lot, and I didn't want to do this. And I told them that I was not ready, that I'm going to cancel it. They had to sit me down. And they told me, I said, I Pastor Yinka said, I'm very selfish. I'm a very, very selfish woman. So that, so I, so that I would not allow her to celebrate mommy. All, everybody used to celebrate mommy and daddy here. And my husband, they talked to me. And this thing, they took it, and, 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 and the um, sister Nancy, they took everything. They, just, like, they just practically took everything from me. And so the world I'm saying, what you are saying here tonight has really nothing to do with me. It was some people that got risk to do this because I could not have done it. Not for me, you will not, you, this would not have happened, but we thank God. I'm so thankful that I'm doing, standing here 
and I'm honoring my parents. And I thank you all for coming. And I love you guys, and I appreciate you all. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. We give God praise. Just seeing her, being able to talk without crying was a blessing. Because she went through a lot. She went through a lot. And she felt, why, could I, why should I lose both parents? In a span of three years, both of them are gone. But we thank God because you know where they are. Like they said, they're in our future. We're still going to see them. Because daddy's last words to me when he was living in 2019, and I called him when he was going to the airport, he said, Daddy, Inka, my daughter, I didn't get to see you because I had surgery that time. He told me, I didn't get to see you. I said, Daddy, don't worry. When I come to Nigeria, you come back again, we will see. He said, Oh, by God's grace, we are still going to see, not knowing that will be the last time. But we will still see him in our future. Praise the Lord. Special number by ICC Vineyard Voices. Give them a round of applause, please. Hallelujah. Mark 8.36 says, What shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? As you listen to this song, I pray, that the Lord will make you to align with his purpose. And when the role is called upon yonder, your name and my name will not be missing in the book of life. In Jesus' name, amen.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ijobaru, it means heaven is the reward of the believer. Praise the Lord. We will all make heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to call on our senior pastor, Pastor Dipo Kalejai, to please give us a sermon. Give him a round of applause as he comes up. Amen. What can we say? Those who have been with us in ICCLA, uh, we all come to know that they are mommy. We've grown to love them. They've grown to love us. And uh, they have been, for those who really know them, they are inspirations. They really inspired us on how to serve God in old age. It's one thing to serve God when you are young, but to maintain and sustain that passion at that age, at that level, that was an inspiration, at least for me. I remember when I visited daddy when he was sick, when he was in the hospital, and I went to share the word with him on faith. This man was vibrant. I mean, he was soaking everything up, and we were sharing the word, and you would not even know that anything was wrong with him. The way he was smiling, the way he was laughing, the way he, and he believed God. He believed he was going to come out of that thing. That was the kind of faith that daddy had. At that age, he was an inspiration. Mommy and prayer, the both of them were like this. At that age, I mean, they inspired me. You people are so blessed to have them as your parents. You are so blessed to have them as your parents. I, from the testimonies, I'm not surprised about daddy using his wealth and status in life to move the body of Christ from where it is to where it ought to be, as I was telling the congregation. Money amplifies your voice. And when you have influence in the society, the reason why God has put you in that place is not to live unto yourself. It is to use it for the kingdom. And that was what daddy was doing. Daddy was using his influence both in the judiciary and even as an oba to promote the gospel and getting oba saved. And let me, letting people know that you can be wealthy and still love God and still love Jesus and still serve Jesus. That you can be a big man in the society and still submit to Jesus. You know, he, he exemplified all these things. So we just thank God for his life. Glory be to his name. Hallelujah. I want to talk about the reality of heaven tonight. I know that um, at a time like this, I always let the family talk about those who have departed. And I try to address those of us who are still here. Daddy and mommy, they have already made it. There is no doubt about it. That they are in heaven. They are beholding the face of the Savior. In fact, the fact that we are doing this together, it's not by accident, you know. Just like Pastor Yenka said, I mean, you could feel the love that they had for each other when they were here on this side of eternity. So I'm not surprised that circumstances, situations, everything came together. And this is the first time that we are doing both husband and wife together the same day. But it's not by accident. So, I want to spend tonight to just share quickly with us about the reality of heaven. And I want to use a story in the Bible that is very familiar to all of us. You know, Jesus gave about 38 parables. And in all of those parables, he never mentioned any name. Because there were parables. But there was a story he told where he mentioned names. That story was not a parable. In fact, scholars agree that that story was not a parable. It was something that he witnessed himself, and he gave an account. And that story is in Luke chapter 16. I'm reading from verses 19 through 31. Luke 16, 19 through 31. He said, there was a certain man. This was Jesus speaking. He said, there was a certain rich man. He used the word certain. There was a certain rich man, which was clothed in purple, and, and fine linen, and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. He gave the name. This was not a parable. This was not a fable. This was not a parable. This was a, something that happened, that he witnessed. Named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate, which means this Lazarus 
was not able to walk by himself. He was laid, means he was carried and put there. He was always carried and put there at the gate of this rich man. Full of sores and desiring that this beggar was always desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Desiring doesn't mean that he was fed. The Bible doesn't say that he was fed, no. But he desired, always desired. Anytime that he was led there, he would desire to be fed. But this rich man never fed him. But he was always desiring to be fed with the crumbs. Not even, for, not even with the food itself, but it just the crumbs. But the rich man did not even look his way. Okay? Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Now, the Bible said the beggar died and was carried by the angels. That should give you comfort. You see, because angels will only minister to the heirs of salvation. The Bible says angels are ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who are the heirs of salvation. In other words, those who know God, those who are born again, those who are God's children. The angels, they are spirits that have been sent forth to minister for us. So the angels came and did their job. The beggar was a child of God and they carried the, 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 the beggar to Abraham's bosom. Then the Bible says that the rich man also died and was buried. No angel came to carry him. He was buried. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes. Wait a minute. But he was already dead. Why would he be lifting up his eyes again? He was already dead. So that should tell you something right there. That just physically, physically dying is not the end of everything. Because he was dead physically. And yet he lifted up his eyes. So your real you is not really your physical body. Your real you, you are a spirit with a soul living in a body. That should just tell you right there. That that's, you know, he died and yes, he lifted up his eyes in hell. Being in torment and sees Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. In other words, the way he used to boss people around when he was here on earth, he thought he could still be bossing people over there. He said, send him, send, send this guy to come, and, to come and cool my tongue here. Okay? Verse 25. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Now, when you read that, you may be misled into thinking that, oh, just because some people, some people had it good, therefore they go to hell, or they go to heaven. And those who had it bad will go, to, will, will, will go to heaven. No, 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 no. That's what the Bible is saying. I'm going to explain that. Okay? But let's go on. He said, but now he's comforted and thou art, thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed so that they which will pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that will come from thence. Now understand what is going on here. Abraham was a very rich man. The Bible says he was very, very wealthy while he was here on earth. And yet he was in heaven. So you can see that this has nothing to do with whether you are rich or poor. Or whether you get to heaven because you are rich or poor. No. Abraham was very wealthy, but he was in heaven. Okay. Now, the Bible says that this man was able to call, the, the, uh, the rich man was able to call Abraham in that place. Now, as you read on, you will see that you'll be wondering, how was it possible that Abraham was able to hear this man in that place? If, the man, if this man was in hell, the Bible says he lifted up his eyes in hell, and yet he called Abraham. Uh, from my father, there's a great goal fixed. Now, you need to understand something. Before Christ died, this took place at the time before Christ died and resurrected for us. You know, that was at, the, at that time, all those who died, whether you were a child of God or you are not a child of God, you must go to a place called the abode of the dead. The abode of the dead is Hades in Greek and Sheol in Hebrew. 
It's the abode of all those who died. And it is called Abraham, that is the English word. Abraham, the English word calls it Abraham's bosom. It is the abode of the dead. It is Sheol. It is Hades in Greek. Everybody who died after that time, before Christ came and died, they were all there. However, there, from what this Bible is saying, there is a great goal fixed in Sheol, in Hades, where there is those who are in Abraham's bosom, and those who are in a place called Gehenna. Gehenna is hell in Greek. In Gehenna. So it is possible for those who are in that Gehenna to shout and they will hear from the other side, those who are in Abraham's bosom. This is what was happening here. Now, the Bible says, this man said, in verse 27, then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that is Abraham, that thou wouldst, wouldst send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, I have five brothers, that he may testify to them, lest they also come into this place of torment. He's begging Abraham, said, please, help me send somebody back to the earth, to planet earth. Because I have five brothers who are just living the way I'm, I was living when I was there. I didn't think of the reality of heaven. I didn't think hell was really real. So they too, they have been, I don't want them to die and come to, this thing is real. It's for real. Please, I don't want them to make the mistake that I made. Help me send somebody down to tell them that this thing is for real. That they need to change their ways. He was begging Abraham to please do that. Verse 29, Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. In other words, they have all of the pastors, they have all of the evangelists, they have the, by the scripture, they have all of the prophets, they have, all, they, they have everything that they need to be able to decide whether heaven is real or hell is real. If they will not listen to those people, even if somebody rose from the dead, they will not listen to the person. That was the answer that Abraham, Abraham gave. Okay? Verse 30. And that rich man said, No, Father Abraham! He was still arguing. It was the no that he said when he was here on earth to God that got him to hellfire. He's still saying no today. Right there, he's still saying, he's still, he's saying no, Father Abraham. He must have his way. No, Father Abraham. Have you met people that you have shared the, or you try to share the gospel with? And you are trying to share the gospel with them and the love of God. And they're saying no. Okay, uh, Cain, who, who, who was the wife of Cain? Why did, did Cain marry his sister? Is that, is, that the, is that the issue? We are talking about you going to hellfire. You are asking whether you can marry the sister. And they will be carrying you on a journey that makes no sense. You know, they, will be, they will be arguing the scripture and arguing things. They will not talk about what you are talking about. So this man was still arguing. He said, no, Father Abraham. But if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. Remember that there was actually one Lazarus that was raised from the dead. Did people repent after he was raised from the dead? We still continue to sin. Jesus himself that resurrected. Till today, there are people who are saying that he did not resurrect. They said he fled to India. They said it was a swoon on this cross. Yeah, it was a swoon. He swoon on the, he fainted on the cross. And that's how the disciples came and carried him. And then he ran away to India. Till today, there are some people still saying that. Even Jesus that came and died and resurrected till today. Nobody has been able to find his body. We know where Buddha's body was buried. Do we know where Muhammad's body was buried? Confucius' body. The only person that walked on this planet whose body has not been found and you can never find where it was buried is Jesus. Why? Because he resurrected. And they went and complained to Pilate and said, you know what, Pilate? Tell people, let, let, us, let us say that it is his disciple that came to steal him at night. Pilate said, no, don't, don't come. So don't come involve me with that one. What I've done, I've done. You want to go and concord lie? That is your business. Verse 31. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Let me conclude with this. And that's the appeal I'm making to you and all those who are watching us online today. 
Daddy and mommy, they have run their course, they have run their race, they have finished well. There is an ark of salvation. The same way there was the ark of Noah in the days of Noah. In the ark of, ark of Noah, the most beautiful human being outside of the ark was lost. But the most fair, maybe not, I don't want to say the ugly, because nobody is really ugly that God created. All of us are beautiful in our own way. The richest person that was outside of the ark during the day of Noah was lost. The poorest person that was inside the ark was saved. The strongest man that was outside of the ark was lost, was carried away by the flood. The weakest man that was inside that ark was saved. So it, was, it is not whether you are big or small. It is not whether you are rich or poor. It is not whether you have money or you don't have money. It is not whether you are beautiful or you are not beautiful that gets you saved. It is whether you are in the ark. And there is also this ark of salvation in Christ Jesus. What you get, what will get you saved is whether you are in that ark. It has nothing to do with your pedigree. It has nothing to do with your parents. It has nothing to do with your education. It has nothing to do with your money. It has nothing to do with anything about you. It only has to do whether you are in that ark of salvation. Whether you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If the answer is yes, you are on your way to heaven. If the answer is no, you are on your way to hellfire. You know, the renowned atheist, the French atheist, Voltaire, hear what he said. Voltaire was one of the most aggressive antagonists of Christianity. He blasphemed God repeatedly. He said this about Jesus. He said, curse the wretch. In 20 years, Christianity will be no more. My single hand will destroy the edifice. It took 12 apostles to rear. <laughs> he said, the physician that was waiting on him, on Voltaire, when he was dying, hear what the physician said, that Voltaire said, when he was dying, when Robert met the road. He said, I am abandoned by God and man. I will give you half of what I am worth. If you will give me six months of life, then I shall go to hell and you will go with me. Oh, Christ. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's what he said when he was dying. But compare that to Stephen, the apostle, when Stephen was dying. Acts 7, 59. He said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Lord, do not charge them with this sin. Compare that. The great evangelist D.L. Moody, on his deathbed, he said, I see earth receding and heaven is opening. God is calling me. What are you going to say when it's your time? Because I say time that is coming. It's coming for If Jesus tarries, all of us must die physically. There must be a time that is the moment of truth for you and for me. And we can say whatever we want to say now. We can argue and about the Bible and argue whether Jesus is God, whether he's not son, whether, he's the, whether God can have son, God cannot have son. You can argue all that. But one day, you are going to close these eyes in death. You are going to be by yourself on your deathbed, maybe surrounded by family members, but you are the one that is going that day. What are you going to see on that day? What are you going to say? Are you ready for that day? Are you ready for that day? John chapter 5, 24, TLBC, the Living Bible translation says, I say emphatically that anyone who listens to my message and believes in God who sent me, this is Jesus speaking, has eternal life and I will never and will never be damned for his sins but has already passed out of death into life. Once you give your life to Jesus, you have passed, you have crossed over from death to life. The message version puts it this way. It is urgent that you listen carefully to this. Anyone here who believes what I'm saying right now and aligns himself with the Father, who has in fact put me in charge, has at this very moment the real lasting life and is no longer condemned to be an outsider, 
This person has taken a giant step from the world of the dead to the world of the living. This is the world of the dead. <laughs> because every day that passes, we are dying. This is the world of the dead. Where your parents are is the world of the living. There, they don't die there. There, they are young there. The body does not degenerate. They have a glorious body that does not know anything about pain or anything. They don't die there. They don't cry there. There is no pain. There is no sorrow there. There is life there. Life that, you, that I mean, life that eyes have never seen, ears have never heard. The kind of life that, that is there. But here is a world of dying. People are dying every day. Every day that passes, your body is dying. Every day. But Jesus said, if you will receive him as Lord and Savior, you will pass from the world of dying to the world of the living. Because what is going to happen is, as soon as you transition from here, the day your parents transition from here, the Bible said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. There is no break. And Jesus is so good to us that for the believers, the day you are going to die, angels will come so that there will be no fear. You will never be afraid of death as a child of God. The angels will land. Once it's your time, the angels will land to comfort you, to strengthen you. They will come to comfort you, to strengthen you, to carry you once you breathe your last breath. And, and there is no break in transmission. As soon as you exit this planet, immediately you are present with the Lord. And, the, and there is glory all over you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I want to pray now. Let us bow down our heads. If you are here today or you are hearing us online and you want to see daddy and mommy again, they have left behind a great legacy. The legacy of passion for God. Love for God. And you want to see them again. We know where they are. So for you to see them again, if you don't want to be like that rich man, <laughs> you want to see them again, this is your moment. And you don't have to pay any money. You don't have to do anything other than to accept what Christ has done for you. Christ loves you so much so that you will not end up in hellfire. People say, a good God, how can a good God send people to hellfire? You are very correct. He's a good God. He never sends people to hellfire. It is people who decide to go to hellfire. God actually sent Jesus to come and die so that nobody will go to hellfire who will receive him. So today, if you want to receive Jesus, so that you won't end up in hellfire, so that you will see that dear mommy again, so that you will have eternal life, and you will see all of your loved ones again, this is your moment. Just say after me. Put your hand over your heart area and mean it from the bottom of your heart and repeat after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Forgive me my sins. Wash them away with your precious blood. I believe in my heart that you are coming again. And I'm asking now, Father, that you give me the gift of the Holy Spirit whom you have promised to all those who received Jesus. By faith, I receive Jesus right now. And I thank you because I'm born again. I'm now a child of God. And I'm on my way to heaven. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I want to congratulate you because you are now born again. You are now a child of God. You are on your way to heaven. The accommodation that was reserved for you by Satan in hellfire has just been canceled. Now a mansion is reserved for you in heaven. Congratulations. God bless you. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, uh, Pastor Dupo, for that wonderful message. It's a reminder for us that <laughs> our, our own day will come. But there's a prayer I remember that they used to pray for us then that we will see Jesus before we see death. And that is our prayer. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to call on Dickie Nike um, for the offering um, for the family. Um, offering and prayer over offering for the family. Thank you. Thank you very much. Again, I will say welcome. Uh, thank you all for coming out tonight to join us in this service. And uh, uh, we also say condolence to our beloved uh, Dickness Bimbo and her family uh, and all the members of the family of the Oba 
and uh, Olori. Uh, <laughs> now, we have come to a, 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 a place in this program tonight where we'll be raising or accepting offering. Well, we are given opportunity here to support the family. It's a tradition that we have established here on earth by which we help each other when people go through stuff like this. So, tonight, um, I'll be asking you all to dip down into your pockets and do your treasures and find something tangible to help this family at this time. Now, as you have heard and seen, this is a double uh, woman. It's, it's not just one, but two. So we need really to support this family in what they are going through now with cash, money. I always say there are uh, three kinds of comfort. One, the comfort that God comforts us. Two, the comfort that we comfort each other by our words and our presence. And three, the comfort of money. And this is a very great comfort because after all those comforts and there's no money to accomplish the things we want to do, then those comforts will fall apart. Amen? <laughs> so, and, and not only that, uh, his uh, royal majesty, Oba, and the wife, Olori, are frequent, Olori, 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 right? Okay. Not Olori, Olori. Okay. I got it now. They are frequent. They, uh, permit me, and I'm, I'm an Igbo man. I'm not a Yoruba person. So, <laughs> if I give you an Igbo word now, you say it wrongly too. Okay. So, they are frequent guests and members of our church. Every time they come to the United States, they are here. They sit in front here. And they enjoy what we do. And we enjoy their presence. So they are not strangers to us. They are a part of our family. And when things happen in family, then the family members will rally around and take care of business. Now maybe you are not in this hall tonight. Maybe you are out there in, uh, in, in internet or whatever land. You are TV land. And you are watching us. Thank you for watching. Now this is also for you. You will be a part of this. You know, thank God for technology. It has gone so far that you can be here and send money to China. There's something we call Zell. Uh, do we have the Zell number? Media, can we have a phone number for Zell on the wall? Okay, right now. You can see the Zell number. So wherever you are, you can be a part of this giving. So please, deep hand very into your treasure. Don't, don't, don't withhold and be a part of what we are doing tonight. We're going to give offering to this family. Now, all the money we collect now are going to the family, not to the church. So don't worry about that. We're not trying to raise money for bringing you here. We're trying to ask you to help in what we are doing to comfort this family for what they have been going through. It's a burden. Uh, and that God will use us this night to give them some comfort. Amen? So I will want you to that's the Zell. And if you want to write a check, yes, we can accept a check. We write it to our beloved Dickness Bimbo at the first one. Or just write at the first one. They will get it. And send in. Okay? And if you have cash, yes. I think the uh, uh, protocol will go around uh, with our bag and then the money you put there, the rest assured, we'll collect all of them and give to them at the end of, on end of the service. Uh, right now, I want us to bow our heads and let us pray over the offering. Shall we pray? Had your heavenly Father, I will thank you for this moment. It's a moment of truth. A moment that we are about to give to support this family. You said give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, shall men give unto your bosom. You also said that when we do this to any of these little ones out here, by giving and supporting them, we are doing it unto you. And you said also that blessed are the people that mourn because they will be comforted and now we are about to comfort them with the comfort of money. Heavenly Father, we ask you to accept these offerings from us as we give it to them 
and bless as many as will give and show them that you are blessing them for what they have done this night. And let what they have done also, which is this morning, be a blessing to this family in whatever they have to continue about the celebration of life of Oba and his Olori. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Shall we please give to this family? Dikinike, thank you for that. We know Yoruba is your second language. So we truly, truly understand. You're, you're Okoko for a reason. That's what I call him. He understands. And it stems from him trying to speak Yoruba. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. So right now is family Thanksgiving. So if the family can please proceed to the back. And you're going to dance in. So can you rise up, please, and go to the back. And then the family and friends will join them in dancing forward. So let's all get ready. Put on your dancing shoes to give God praise.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, uh, Pastor Wale and Dickness Bimbo, they, they don't need any introduction. You know, usually when people come up, I say things about them. And uh, they didn't join ICC early when we were at the, when we started at the Hilton. They joined in the apartment. <laughs> they were the first that joined Pastor Dupont and Pastor Nandi to start ICC early inside our apartment as a prayer group. Before when we became 15 people, then we moved to the Hilton. Then some of you started joining us. So when the fame of somebody has gone ahead of them, they don't need any introduction. You just present them. So that I'm just presenting Pastor Ole and Vietnam's Bimbo. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. These are all your children. These are all your children. All the ICC children are your children. All the things that God has been using both of you to do in the lives of God's people. Heaven is recording everything. And then he will continue to reward both of you. Yeah. You have been faithful. Um, my son can make it to college. Yes. Yeah. Um, she was going for, for the prayer. I was going for the prayer. So she captured me and she spoke back to me. And I, and I cried like a baby. She came all the way from Oklahoma. The last time I saw her was in the night. She's here? Yeah, she came from Oklahoma. Where is she? Where are you? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow. You are the evangelist that led her to Christ. <laughs> Glory be to God. We'll see the fruit. The Bible says we should go and bear fruit and our fruit should remain. Your only fruit is not just remain, your fruit became dickness. <laughs> Glory be to God Almighty. I'll tell Pastor Nani to pray for them. Glory be to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Dickness being boy, you're still standing. Amen. And you'll continue to stand. Amen. Amen. For greater is he that is in you Amen. than whatever the world may bring. Amen. It's a very fragile time for you. Mm-hmm. But um, like we always say, they are waiting for you. Mm-hmm. They are in your future. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Our God and Father, we praise you. Amen. Father of all comfort and consolation, the author of life, the giver of so great a salvation that you've given to Oba and Oloria Jakaye, our great redeemer and our savior. Lord, it's by your grace and your mercy that we're here to celebrate the illustrious life, lives of our daddy and our mommy. Everything that they are, they have, and they have accomplished has come from you, the giver of every good gift. And we return the glory back to you, Lord. Father, they have entered into an inheritance that will never tarnish or fade away. They have received the crown of glory. And we thank you. Lord. For keeping them to the end. Thank you, Lord. And ushering them into your kingdom. Thank you, Lord. And now, Father, we commend the family to you as they continue in this journey of life. Keep them. Amen. Preserve them. Amen. Both here and all over the world. Yes, we lift up to you every prayer that mommy and daddy have uttered into your ears Mm -hmm. concerning their seed. Mm -hmm. Because you're the God who gathers our prayers even when we're no longer on this earth. And it still speaks because you never die. Mm -hmm. And so we thank you for the continuous manifestation of every prayer that they've uttered into your ears. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus Christ. And now as the family continue to deliberate and plan for the funeral of mommy. We thank you for going ahead of them and establishing and installing them. In every finished and completed work from the foundation of the earth. Concerning mommy's funeral. Holy Ghost. Superintend and oversee and overshadow everything that has to do with the funeral. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone that is traveling by air and by road, 
we decree safe and peaceful passage. Amen. By the blood of Jesus Christ, we decree that as you go forth, you stand delivered from whatever destroyeth, whatever consumeth, and whatever devoureth. In the name of Jesus Christ of Amen. Nazareth, because you belong to the Lord, wheresoever you step upon is holy ground. The plane you fly in is holy ground. Amen. The cars you enter is holy ground. Amen. Every building you enter is holy ground. Amen. The place where mommy is going to be laid to rest, where you are, is holy ground. Amen. Because it is holy ground, it is subject to the absolute power and superintendence of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we thank you for being enthroned over those days of the laying to rest of mommy. Thank you for manifesting manifesting your power and glorifying your name. Thank you for your angels that you have already unleashed in their great numbers to guard and stand sentry over everyone that will be coming, Lord. They will come in peace and they will all depart in peace Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. We will not have cause to sorrow over anyone that will be traveling for this funeral in Jesus' name. Amen. And Father... I commit to everybody here who has come to celebrate the lives of our parents. I pray, Father, that this same grace that was multiplied in their lives and abounded in their lives and enabled them to finish strong will abound in our lives. Amen. And we will finish strong. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. And let's dance back to our seat. We will never be ungrateful to you, Lord. No. Hallelujah, amen. We will soon finish, but before we do that, um, we're going to have the vote of thanks by Prince Pastor Wale Adefeso. Vote of thanks. You may be seated, please. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. With sincere gratitude, I want to thank everyone that is here this evening. On behalf of my family, the Adefesos, the Ajakais, we would like to thank you for your support during this challenging time. We thank you so much for all the calls, all the gifts, the kind expressions, and the sympathy that you have shown my family during this period. I want to thank everyone that have traveled from far and wide. Some came from out of state, 
And we thank the Lord for Johnny Mercies, and God will take you back safely. I want to thank the Lord for my siblings, especially my baby sister. She was going to have her 50th birthday yesterday. That means we won't be able to have this. So she has to move it to next year so that we can celebrate this occasion. And she's sister there. I did do you okay, Wally. So I want to thank the Lord for everyone. And I pray that your time of need, God will raise up men and women that will lift up your hands. And they will bless your path in Jesus' name. And also, when you're going back, the Lord God Almighty will take you back home safely. The Lord will always reward you. He will make his face to shine upon you in every part of your life. Your heart desire is met. For coming down this way, I join my faith with yours in all that you believe in the Lord for, that the Lord will bring to pass, and you glorify his name. I appreciate you. On behalf of my entire family, I want to say thank you. My pastors, thank you so much. We appreciate you. The choir, the media, the protocol, the maintenance, the CHP, those are the ones that are getting the cast. I really want to appreciate. This is, to be honest with you, this is a voluntary thing. It just came on their own, and we want to thank the Lord for their lives. As you sow into people's lives, God himself will sow and will gratify you in Jesus' name. I want to thank you all. God bless you. Thank you so much, Pastor Wale. Please do not leave. There's food in the banquet hall. Um, I know we do have a hymn. Choir, can you sing the first or the last stanza of that hymn? Just the last stanza of the hymn. So as to, um, and then uh, Pastor Dupo will please come up after them for the benediction, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for coming. God will bless you abundantly in Jesus' name. that came out to serve tonight. This is what Christianity, true Christianity is all about. I keep saying it. It's not just coming to church every Sunday and dancing and lifting up hands. It is being able to sacrifice for one another, being able to stretch yourself and be good to one another. And I just want to thank all those ministries that have come out tonight to help. God bless you all. Let us, I want to appreciate the pastors in the house. Pastor Adiago, thank you for coming. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I think I said Pastor Mrs. Ibabola. Somewhere right there. Thank you for coming, Pastor Busola, Pastor Van Coli. Which other pastor is here? Bayo. Pastor Bayo Lubimo. Okay. Any other pastor? Pa oh, of course, our own Pastor OJ. <laughs> ICCSJ. Pastor OJ and Dickness Helen. Thank you. Pastor. Pastor Grace. I've already called her already. I've already called her. Pastor Anna is here too. She came also. So, all the pastors and their wives and husbands, I want to thank you for coming tonight. Amen. Now, I understand a man uh, forgot his bracelet in the men's uh, restroom. So if you are that man, maybe your bracelet broke away from your hand. See our uh, Abu MC. Thank you, Pastor Yinka, for your job. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. So please see her after the service. If you know you lost a bracelet in the men's restroom, see her and, and claim it. Let us share the grace in fellowship. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy are following us all the days of our lives, and we are dwelling in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you all. Please don't forget Amen. to get food in the banquet hall. Food in the banquet hall. Thank you. Thank you.